I am totally not ready to tell this story, but that's appropriate because this is all about a situation that I'm totally not ready for. <laughs> I also feel weird telling this story because uh, I feel like maybe I'm the 10th white guy who's told this story <laughs> in the world. Um, oh, Eleven. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But like, white folk. Um, so, uh, so my name's JJ, I'm a, I'm a social person, I really like to uh, reach out to humans, I'm an extrovert, uh, I'm a big inviter, it's my superpower, I like start parties, I'm like, oh, we have to bring that person and that person and that person, and then I host this house concert series at my house where I make lentil soup, literally in a pot this big, eight pounds of lentils to feed the masses, right? That's just how I roll. And in the last two years, it's gone from that to playing block captain on my block. Uh, and we started to organize block parties, and that's kind of awesome. I live in the 4500 block of Osage in West Philly. Um, been there uh, about 12 years. Um, and we're getting to know our neighbors and doing neighborly things. Um, and, you know, ex excess, and I'm just like really trying to invite everyone. Um, and uh, we make these big signs that say, welcome to block off the street. Not like street clothes, right? We're like, no, no, no. they're going to say, welcome. So I'd like to do that. Um, and then we're, we're making friends with our neighbors, and it's a lovely, idyllic little block. Um, and then a couple months ago, we start to see these sort of shady realtor characters um, taking pictures of the building on the end of our block. Uh, and they're around with clipboards and cameras, and there's a lot of activity. And this happens to be the building on the side of our block that uh, is primarily lower income people of color on our block. Um, uh, you know, and it's uh, the majority of the more like socioeconomic diversity on our block. Uh, and we see just like a lot of activity. We're kind of like, what's going on? And I talked to one of the, the people with the clipboard. She's like, oh, we're just doing insurance stuff. And I hear her tell a resident, uh, oh, we're just doing some insurance stuff. Um, we're like, something's going on. We start making plans to organize a, like a community meeting, like a block meeting to get our people together and see what's going on. Uh, and I'm putting all the resources into this, right? It's like reaching out. We're going to send letters to every single unit of every single apartment on the block, so even the people who are not yet plugged in are going to get an invite, we're going to do a block asset map, we're going to see who needs what, we're, we're like trying to like build some community support and also be like, what the hell's going on with this building? Um, the day I put those invites in the mail, I get a text message from um, uh, the 81-year-old uh, elder who I'd made friends with at the block party. He's 81, he texts like a fiend with the best use of emojis. Um, and he's been on the building 50 years. We should have been friends 10 years ago, but he, he doesn't get out too often, so we're just starting to be friends. Uh, and he tells me that he's just been given six weeks notice to move out of this building. So we start organizing, we start roping in the neighbors, we start like, what the hell is going on? We do some research, we're like, oh, this building, it's not just like the gentrification happening in the neighborhood. Property values, University City going up, people are getting pushed out all over the city. I get it, capitalism, can't fix it today. Um, but, but this building is owned by Mission First Housing Group, which is an affordable housing nonprofit, whose whole reason for being their whole reason for getting donations, their whole reason for getting public funding, lots of your tax dollars, is their mission, which started off creating permanent housing, their parent company still uses the word permanent, their mission statement right now is safe, affordable, uh, sustainable uh, uh, housing, right? So again, 81 year old, 50 years in the building, six weeks notice. Meanwhile, we found out, oh, he hasn't had running water in his shower for two years. His toilet works, but his sink doesn't. Uh, we find out people in the building haven't had heat. Uh, we find out there's a mother with three children who was invited to move into this building just uh, six or seven months ago, right? When the sale was already being planned, and all of a sudden, uh, it's like, welcome to Spruce Hill, where there's all these resources for your kids, and you're in the catchment area for the fancy school, and never mind, get out. So we're feeling all sorts of ways about this. Neighbors start organizing, start making some noise, um, and they're totally arbitrary uh, lease termination dates. He got six weeks notice. Some people got till the end of December, even though they moved into the building more recently. Makes no sense. None of it makes any sense. Running out of time. So uh, we're running out of time in this real life situation, right? <laughs> so we organize, we make some noise, we get an article in the Inquirer, you can look it up, uh, and it tells us, it, it, all of a sudden, the organization gives people an extension till the end of January and offers to like, make sure to relocate everyone and to pay for moving costs. Uh, but they wouldn't have had we not made the noise in the Inquirer. Uh, we make some more ruckus, they come to our community association to present to the zoning board. It's not the meeting we asked for, um, but they do that. Um, and so then we find ourselves in a meeting last night, we got on NBC News last night. Uh, this was up to last night, right? Uh, today someone was evicted from the building for another, that was in the works because of legal stuff. But the point is we have a situation that is ongoing um, and I'm torn because I'm overdoing it trying to like single-handedly like 
instigate a lot of organizing, although amazingly people came out of the woodwork. We had like 130 people at the meeting last night. Um, uh, I think they are overdoing it as an organization that has spread themselves too thin because they're making choices about you number of units and finances and, uh, and we have a situation where um, you know, individual lives are really getting cast aside and realtors were told about the sale of the building and were engaged before residents were told this was being swept out from under them. And now I'm overdoing it by using this forum as a call to action, where I'm going to tell you the building is called the Arvilla, A-R-V-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A. And if you go to arvillaorganizing.tumblr.com, we could use your help. Thank you. Woo!